In this presentation, we will record the sale of our finished goods of our finished jobs. We're going to enter the information into our general journal, post that to the general ledger, use the general ledger to create the trial balance. First, a word from our sponsor. Well, actually, these are just items that we picked from the YouTube shopping affiliate program, but that's actually good for you because these aren't things that were just given to us from some large corporation which we don't even use in exchange for us selling them to you these are things that we actually researched purchase and use ourselves here we have a western digital wd elements 20 terabyte usb 3.0 desktop external hard drive we use as part of our backup system noting that if you lower the number of terabytes of storage the price will lower dramatically as well when you're thinking about a backup system you're usually thinking about an online system or an external hard drive system like this or ideally some combination between the two giving you some redundancy you can also work directly from an external hard drive like this but there are some drawbacks to doing that one being if you use this as your primary drive you're working from it's no longer a backup drive and you're going to need a backup system possibly another external hard drive and or some kind of cloud backup system and if you're working on something that takes up a lot of short-term memory a lot of ram as you're working on it such as video editing the external hard drive can slow up the system so you might want to come up with some kind of system where you download the project you're working on to your computer to your c drive or possibly to a solid state drive which is a much more expensive uh, external hard drive as you do the work once the work is done then save the project to an external hard drive such as this if you would like a commercial free experience consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com where we have many different courses you can purchase one at a time or have a subscription model giving you access to all the courses courses which are well organized have other resources like excel files and pdf files to download and no commercials the trial balance in order assets liabilities equity income and expenses we are in balance debits equaling the credits debits minus the credits equaling zero we currently have net income just a loss at this time of the 380 in the cost of goods sold so our goal this time is going to be to record the sale so we finally have gone through this full process we have the raw materials that we used to create the work and process and then added the direct labor and the overhead to it as well we then finished that moved it to the finished goods and now we're going to sell a couple of jobs finally the jobs are done again if they're custom guitars or if they're custom something then we're selling the products at the end if they're construction projects then uh, we're completing the construction project at this time and re recording the sale related to that so we're going to say that uh, uh, the jobs that are completed and sold are 15 and 16. So let's go to our job cost sheet over here. We're going to go to the, to the right and look at these two that have been sold. So these are all the jobs that we have. And they all consist of direct materials, labor, and overhead. And we're saying now that uh, these three, the blue ones, have been completed. They're done. The green ones are not completed. The blue ones support... Uh, what is in finished goods meaning uh, these accounts add up to this uh, this number here and that's going to be supported that's going to be what's on the trial balance so in other words this trial balance account in finished goods is supported not only by the finished goods GL but by the jobs that have been completed and then this number here are all the ones that are uncompleted these two and that is also supported on the trial balance by this number. So in, in other words, this work in process is, is supported by the work in process GL and the jobs. What we're saying now is that some of these have been sold. And these are the three kind of forms that we can have in a job. They can either be open, <laughs> we're, we're work in process. They can be closed, finished goods, or they could be sold. I'm going to say they're shipped, they're gone. And that means that they should have gone through cost of goods sold. 
And we can't really track them like a balance sheet account because the income statement accounts will roll in the retained earnings. They're temporary. So we're saying this time that two of these jobs are finished. These two have been finished. So I'm going to make this account then yellow. So what I'm going to do is unblue this one by highlighting these two. I want to format paint this. So I'm going to highlight these, go to the paintbrush, home tab, format painter, and then paintbrush that. And then I'm going to make this one yellow. Uh, I'm going to make, yeah, the shifting, I'm going to make it yellow. So right click and make it yellow. So the yellows are going to be the shipped one. And of course it's on the shipped column. And then I'm going to do the same thing down here. So I'm going to highlight this whole thing, home tab, format paint, and highlight this whole thing. So now this one has been shipped. So we're saying that these two then are the ones that are being sold, job 15 and 16. Here's the total for them. So I'm going to say this one, holding down control, and this one add up to 6,610. So from a journal entry standpoint, we need to take 6,610 out of finished goods and record it into cost of goods sold. So, so that's what we're going to do. Now, I'm going to scroll all the way back to the left. Now, when we think of this, this sales journal entry, after doing all this stuff of tracking the cost, we kind of forget what the sales journal entry is after a while because we haven't really thought about the sales for a while. So <laughs> we've been tracking the cost. So this whole thing deals with the cost. And, and the sales journal entry, remember, has two parts, whether it be merchandising sales or for a manufacturing company. One is we have the sales half. So the sales half would mean that we made a sale. We did what we did. We did, if we were a service company, we did work. Uh, for an in, for a merchandising company, we delivered the goods. And for a merchandising company, if we make goods, we deliver the goods as well. It's finally done. If it's a construction company, we completed the job. So what we're going to do here is record the sale. And the sale means, uh, typically, uh, we, we either got paid or we got an IOU. They, they're going to owe us money. We're going to bill the client. So I'm going to right click on accounts receivable and say that that's going up. We're going to say right click and copy, put that up top in F10, right click and paste one, two, three. Now the problem is based on our information, we don't know what the sales price is. And that's the problem with these kind of problems because we're only dealing with a cost. So we'll, we'll get back to the sales price, but I just want to post this first half that's normally posted first of the journal entry as we then think about what we're working on, which is the second half of the sales journal entry. So then the other side of that would be sales or revenue. Revenue has a credit balance. It only goes up in the credit direction. We're going to increase it with a credit. So J18, I'm going to right click and copy. And we'll put that in F11, right click and paste one, two, three. So that's the debit and credit related to the sales. Again, I don't know what the sales price is unless they give it to us. And they did here. They're going to say the sales price is a 30% markup. So again, let's wait on that and let's do the thing that we know first. We know that we are sold what? We sold inventory. So at this point, this is the same as like a merchandising company. We've got the inventory that's finished. We're going to sell it. That means it's going to go down because we're, we're now, if they're guitars, we gave the guitars away and it's going down. So this is a debit balance. We're going to do the opposite thing to it, a credit. So I'm going to right click and copy. I'm going to make a new journal entry, skip a line, skip another line. I'm in F14, right click and paste one, two, three. And then uh, the debit then is going to go to uh, the cost of goods sold. So that's an expense account. It's going to go up in the debit direction. I'm going to right click and copy that and put this in F13, right click and paste one, two, three. So without the numbers here, this should still kind of look familiar. This is our, whenever we sell inventory on a perpetual system, this is what we have. We have the sales half, receivables and sales. Sales go up and people owe us money if we invoice them. And then inventory goes down, in this case, finished goods inventory, and cost of goods sold uh, is the expense, which is going to go up. So now the inventory is going to go down and the expense is going to go up. I'm going to calculate it here. We already looked at it. It's these two jobs these two completed jobs. So within G13, I'm going to say equals. I'm going to scroll all the way to the jobs and see if we can recalculate this again. It's going to be these two shipped jobs. This one plus this one. The, that's going to be the journal entry. So the, the finished amount of these two jobs and enter. 
So we already calculated it was it was 6610 if I double click on it. Let's do it again. It's this number. It's it's equal to AI12 plus AI21. And then the credit is going to decrease finished goods inventory negative of this number. So we just looked kind of at the at the inventory the the cost of goods sold of course will be the same. So now we want to think about well what is what is uh, the sales price then? Well, one way that sometimes we think about the sales price, and again, it doesn't have to be this way. The, the two aren't tied necessarily uh, together, but we can think of different ways the sales price might be derived from the cost. So it's a third. We're going to say there's a thirty percent markup. So if I go all the way back over here, if we thought about this as kind of like a, a construction process or something like that, or a guitar or anything that we make, if it's custom. We, one may, way we might bill our clients, one way we might construct the, the invoice to say, Hey, look, I'm going to, I'm going to tell you exactly what the cost is and I'm going to mark it up by something, in our case, 30%. So we're going to say, look, the materials cost this, the direct labor cost this, and the overhead I try to allocate as much as, as well as I can cost that. The total cost is 3,820. That's the cost. And we're going to have a 30% markup. That's my revenue on it. And so that could be calculated as 3820 times point times point three. And that's the amount of revenue we're making plus the original cost, 3820, is the 4966. So that would be for this job what we would charge if we had a 30% markup. The other way we can do it is we could say, okay, if it was 3820 times 100% is one. 0 0.3, 130%, 1.3, 130%. And we'll get to that same 4966. So that's one way we can do it. Remember that these sheets here could look kind of like invoices if we're thinking about uh, billing the client on a construction or a project or any kind of custom project. They're not necessarily an invoice because this is tracking the cost. This gives us the cost. But that could be a starting point on which we derive our invoice. We might tell our clients exactly what it costs and then tell them that we're going to have a markup. That's a very nice, transparent way to to present an invoice. But we might not do it that way. We might come up with a cost in some other in other kind of format, an invoice in some other kind of way. But a construction job, often the invoice will be similar to this. And many kind of, of custom jobs, you might use the actual costs as the jobs and then mark it up. And be as, I think that's as transparent as you can be to, to basically do that. So if we did that for both of them, then we'd say, well, the two jobs add up to uh, 3820 plus the 2790. And between the two of them, we're going to have a 30% markup. So times 1.3, 130% is the 8593. So that's what we're going to have. So another way we can look at it is if we highlight this number and this number. 6610. Uh, that, of course, I'm going to scroll all the way to the left. Scrolling all the way to the left is this number. So I can just take that number, multiply it times a 30% markup. So we'll, we'll let's do that here. I'll be in G10 equals this 6610 uh, times 1.3, a 30% markup. So then the sales is going to be 8593. That's what we're going to invoice the client for in a credit of the same. So so again, this whole problem, whenever you work these problems, we're always focused on inventory. And then this number kind of gets lost, even though that's usually the main thing we focus on when we sell merchandise and 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 any kind of merchandise in manufacturing or uh or uh, non-manufacturing. But um it gets lost when we when we spend the whole time period focusing on tracking the costs. So, uh, and it could be derived from the cost, but it doesn't necessarily have to. All right, so let's post this out now. So here's going to be our, our journal entry. And again, this journal entry, I'm going to make it green uh, just so we can focus on one at a time. So I'll right click on it, make it green. Let's make it that green. So now I know which one I'm working on so I don't get mixed up. All right, so now we're going to post this out. And these two should look familiar now because this is our normal kind of journal entries. The new thing is where do we get the numbers from the job cost sheets? All right, here's the accounts receivable. Here's the accounts receivable, our second favorite account. It's our second account on the GL. 
Here it is in O19. We're going to say equals point to that 8593. The 180 goes up by 8593 to 188,593. That then can be found on the trial balance. We're out of balance by the 8593. Then we're going to go to sales. That's going to be way down here on the income statement. Same order on the general ledger. So I'm going to go all the way to the right. So we're going to go to the right. Here's sales. It's going to be on the credit side. So I'm in AB13. AB13 equals, I'm going to scroll all the way to the left, and I'm going to pick up that green one we're working on, the sales item, and enter. So it goes from zero up in the credit direction by 8,593 to 8,593. And I'm going to, and that number, of course, is found on the trial balance. And that brings up net income. So we're back in balance. Net income is increased by that. So this isn't a loss. This is income. Credits are beating the debits. Revenue minus expenses. Credits minus the debits. Now we're going to record the other one. So I'm going to highlight these. I'm going to make them that blue again. Right click. Here's the bucket. I'm using that blue. If you can't find it there, it's in this little color wheel and then go to standard and it's that one right there and enter and then this one's the last one so I don't need to make it green because we're working on the last one and then here's the cost of goods sold so that's the first one we'll record cost of goods sold last account second to last account so we're gonna go all the way to the right and we're gonna be here in AA 19 gonna say equals scroll to the left pick up that cost of goods sold and enter. So there it goes up from that 380 by 6, uh, 610 to 6990. That then is found on the trial balance. So now it went up by the 8690 and then, and then we had an expense of the inventory bringing the, the net income now at uh, the 1603. Uh, and then we'll record the cost of goods sold so here's, the, I'm sorry, we just did that. Then we'll record the finished inventory. So here's inventory. Here's the finished goods inventory. So finished goods inventory is right there. So we'll be in cell T19. Within T19, we're going to say equals point to that 6610. It's going to bring the 8736 down by 6610 That then also found on the trial balance here, puts us back in balance, and there we have it. So uh, that should be kind of like our normal uh, kind of sales journal entry when, whenever we sell merchandise. Now we need to go back and make sure that these accounts are, are correct, because remember we now did something to the finished goods account, so uh, we're gonna have to adjust our worksheet to make sure that this number should be supported. In other words, here's finished goods here, it went down, it's supported by the GL. We need to make sure it's supported by the worksheets, our jobs. So if we go back to the jobs, we're going to say, okay, these numbers are okay because we didn't do anything to work in process. So, so the work in process accounts, are the open ones, are still good. The finished goods, however, are not now because we changed the color, but not the formula. We've got to say, okay, these were adding up these three now the work in process i'm going to delete that or the i'm sorry the finished goods is only equal to this one that's the only one that's still finished enter these two yellow ones i'm not going to add up i mean we could add them up and say okay those add up to 6610 and if i go to the left that's what that's what's in or that's what we posted to cost to get sold but you'll note it, it won't always be exact because this is a temporary account and it's going to flow out to retained earnings. So of course, over time, we're going to have, they're all going to be shipped at some point in time. And, uh, but they'll all be closed out to cost to get sold and they'll all be closed out eventually to retained earnings. These two, of course, are on the balance sheet, which are permanent. And so, uh, we'll be able to tie these out. So these, these two, of course, are still work in process, which is supported by this amount on the trial balance so if we go to the trial balance there's the work in process it's supported by the work in process gl as well as the jobs as long as we've got them properly allocated 
and then the closed jobs consist of just this one it's on uh, the it's going to be on the GL so here's the GL and that GL account is supported not only by the uh, the I'm sorry here's the trial balance it's supported not only by the GL but it's also supported by the jobs here and that's the one that hasn't been shipped and then these two are shipped and they're basically gone to the temporary account they're now on the income statement in the form of cost of goods sold